the board at all. We're going to connect our start stop switch to terminals one and two. a new terminal board. our switch for start stop here's our speed pot for 0 to 10 push that back too so we get that wire in there we put the wiper on terminal 5A that's the third one down we put the wings of the speed potentiometer on terminal 6 and 2. Okay, so we got start stop on terminals 1 and 2, the wiper of the speed potentiometer on terminal 5A, that's 3 down, 1, 2, 3, the wing of the potentiometer go to terminal six and two. Terminal six is one, two, three, four, five, and two is six, seven, eight. Now we're ready to test this drive. I'm gonna run it unloaded first. Nothing connected to T1, T2, and T3. All right, let's run it and we'll look at the T1, T2, T3 waveforms unloaded with the fluke oscilloscope. Enable the drive to run. It's ramping up to the set frequency by this potentiometer, which right now is set to 29.6 hertz. Okay, there we are. T1 to T2 looks good. T1 to T3 looks good. T2 to T3 looks good. Let's get closer to that oscilloscope there and you can see what's going on. We're at 200 volts per division. Here's T1 to T2. That looks real good. Let's spread that out and you can see the pulse width modulation. That looks real good right there. Here's T1 to T3. These should all look the same. If one of them or two of them look different, there's a problem. Here's T2 to T3. nice. Okay, I'm going to stop the drive. Let's put a motor on it. We'll see what the motor does. 
with those waveforms right there, I feel the motor's going to run real nice. There we go. We're running. It's a good run and drive right there. All right, folks. Hope y'all is having a good day. Looks like we're having a good day here. We'll see you next time. Evening and all, here we are at the house. Now these are the hookups to make the AC Tech Inverter Drive model MH4400B run. Wow, <laughs> look how simple this is. This is not hard at all. If this drive runs, it'll run. <laughs> That's what I like about inverter drives. You give them a run stop command and a speed reference, line voltage, and they'll get up and go. <laughs> they won't ask no questions. Hey, where's my encoder? <laughs> where's my thermal? <laughs> they, they, just, they just get up and go. They want to be a workhorse. Inverter drives are the workhorses of the factory. Now when you have to do precision work, you want a servo, uh, AC or DC servo motor. Uh, in the old days they used to servo the DC motors and now they servo the brushless AC motors. Uh, but with inverter drives like this right here, they'll run and run and run and not complain. <laughs> so. Down here, we're not too worried about this part down here. These have functions. Y'all go out and get the, uh, the uh, PDF off the internet for this drive. But let's get closer to this up here and I'll show you that. This is how we made that motor run. On terminals one and two, two being common, here's a common here and two being common here. On terminals one and two, I have a run stop switch. Here on terminal 5A, that's the third down, 5A, that's your speed reference input. And I've got that wiper of this potentiometer right here going to terminal 5A, third one down. On terminal six, the drive provides 10 volts DC. And on terminal two, the drive provides common. This 10 volts DC between terminal six and terminal two are where you want to connect the wings of your potentiometer. And that potentiometer is a voltage divider dependent upon where you set that potentiometer. We have zero to 10 volts DC on that terminal right here. Now over here on T1, T2, T3, that's where you connect your motor. I used a bow door 
1.5 horsepower motor connected to T1, T2, and T3. You don't have to connect anything to it to look at it though. Uh, if you don't have a motor connected to it, you will still see your pulse width modulation, three phase, T1, T2, and T3. Looking at it with the oscilloscope, I used a fluke oscilloscope. Now down here is where the line comes in, L1, L2, L3. 460 volts AC, three phase, to power up that drive. I like to use a fluke oscilloscope uh, because it's isolated from earth ground. You have to be a little bit careful here when you're looking at these high voltages right here with a standard oscilloscope. You want to use a one-to-one uh, -one transformer or lift the earth ground pin before you start looking at these voltages with the standard oscilloscope. Just be careful folks. <laughs> Just be careful. If you use a fluke oscilloscope uh, you don't have to worry about these high voltages getting back to earth ground. That's the problem. You don't want these high voltages getting back to earth ground. That's a short to earth. <laughs> oh, man. Things go bang. So if you use a fluke oscilloscope, you ain't got to worry about that because that fluke is isolated from earth ground. There you go. That's how you run this motor from these connections right here. All right, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much for stopping by. Just be careful. Y'all know how to be careful, don't you? Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> Just be careful. Don't get yourself lit up like you to come back and watch another one of people's videos <laughs> all right okay <laughs> good night folks thank you very much for stopping by i always appreciate it when you come over and see what we're doing <laughs>